So a hot topic in the NBA community right now, trying to figure out how can we fix the league. And Gilbert Arenas, oh boy, does he have a brilliant idea. Get rid of all the Europeans. 73 points uh, in a game this season, which brings us to our next topic. NBA seen an offensive explosion in recent years. Woo! Scoring averages this season are the highest since 1970. Uh, league since what? 1970. Scoring averages, team combined, collective, before you pull out the phone. Do but the think? league has set a record for offensive efficiency six times the past eight seasons. I also remember this past January, it's been <clears> four days. We saw the two 70-point games, two 60-point games. All-star game, we saw a record 211 points. Uh, Adam Silver was not pleased about that. Some blame defense being legislated out of the game. Others credit the growth of offense. But the league may be looking to make some changes in the near future. NBA executive VP and head of basketball ops Joe Dumars recently told ESPN that the competition committee, uh, committee officially began reviewing whether the game is tilted too far towards offense and whether changes need to be implemented to achieve better balance. Dumar said the following, it is a topic that we're monitoring. We're diving in right now to make sure that we're on the right side of this. It is so crazy to me how invested a lot of people are in this conversation, because to me, in my opinion, changing the rules is inevitable and it's fine and it shows some level of progress. If we don't change the rules, that means that there's not enough innovation to force the rule changes. This idea that like changing the rules is a bad thing, like no, that, that is going to happen when you have a league of open-minded thinkers who try to think outside the box and push the game in the proper direction. And so then when it gets out of hand, you try to adjust accordingly. Also, if you're asking me as well, what do I believe the league should be doing? The rules that should be changed? These are the rules that in my opinion that should be changed is that they need to tighten up the travels and carry calls because they just get away with that way more than I believe they should. You also need to tighten up on the illegal screens because I think that's also pretty crazy. Just allow more physical play on the perimeter. Give more um give more power back to defensive players i think that's the biggest problem but from a fan perspective from somebody who's watching the game by far the most frustrating thing to watch is knowing that these offensive players have way more flexibility way more power it's leverage in their advantage and they continue to take advantage of it every single possession to me that's way more frustrating they know that they have the advantage and they utilize it to their extent it gets a little bit out of hands when i'm like watching people grift to the basket or i'm noticing like players like pick up the ball travel and a whole bunch of other extra stuff that i know for a fact i wasn't watching like 20 years ago i, I know what they can do get rid of all the europeans ah yes peak xenophobic wow uh just just it's such a delight oh my god because because the europeans are the reason why the nba is the way it is right now <laughs> What? You just said it. <laughs> you just said it. You go to college to learn defense. Yeah. What college hey, do Europeans uh, go to? I'm with you. No, I just right? get rid they of them. They don't go to college whatsoever. Yeah. They have no athleticism. They, give some they come have over. no athleticism. They all come over. Hold on. on. <laughs> they have no athleticism, mm -hmm. right? They have no speed, no jumping ability. They are a liability on defense. There's 150 year olds in the league today. Name the top 10 defenders. No, I'm, I, I, None. No, I'm with right? you. Just the Rudy Goldberg and Greek the Freak. Other than that, they're just offensive players. They're not defensive players, right? I'm with, I'm with so the NBA took away aggression. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They took away aggression. There's, there's some validity behind what he's saying. Because as he said, when you, you go to college, you play certain, in, in, in America, you go through certain levels of like training and learning throughout your uh, adolescent years to understand how to play defense, especially on a one-on-one -on -one basis. While overseas, even though these players are playing basketball, professional basketball at a young age, the way that they are raised defensively is not really to defend on a one-on-one -on -one level. And a large part, the reason for this is because the way that the game is structured over there from a rule standpoint, Point. They allow the big man to just stay inside of the paint all day, every day. They just allow the, the um, big to stay inside the paint. The three-point line is closer to the basket. And so with less spacing and allowing the big to just stay in the lane, it makes sense to play zone defense. That That's a, by far the most impactful and most important way to defend. That makes sense. So yes, the perimeter-oriented players, when they come in the league, and it's not even right now. You can scale this back years, right? Like if you stop and think about it, how many perimeter-oriented like foreign players players came into the NBA and were elite level defenders. Not bigs, not Marcus All, not Rudy Gobert, not Giannis, but like how many perimeter oriented European players came in the league and were great defenders? Very few. Not saying they don't exist, but in large part, 
you don't see them as often because again, that's not how they were raised. Burr and Greek the Freak. Other than that, they're just offensive players. They're not defensive players, right? So the NBA took away aggression. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They took away aggression to open up the Euro League. When they first started getting here, it was too rough for them. Mm -hmm. And they, so and they didn't make it. They didn't make it, right? Ooh, so no, eventually, yeah. they softened the rules. They didn't soften the rules for the Americans. They softened the rules to open it up international. Yeah. So that's just a lie. That is, that, is, that is a bold face lie. For people out there who do not know, they start opening up the, the game and they start adjusting rules and taking out the aggression of the game. Back in the late 80s to 90, early 90s, when they implemented flagrant fouls because the bad boy Pistons were beating up the entire league. And no, they weren't beating up Detlef Schrift. They, they didn't change it because, oh, oh we got to protect De Detlef Schrift and, and, um, and, and we got to make sure we protect um, Drajan Petrovic. No. They're protecting Michael Jordan, dog. They're protecting their commodities in the NBA. They were getting roughened up, beaten up, and those players were American. When they moved the three-point line closer to the basket, nigga, how many Europeans were in the league at that time? There weren't that many Europeans in the NBA. They did that to open up the league at wide, at, at large. When they changed, when they moved it back to where it initially was in the late '90s and the early 2000s, they changed, they changed the rules to open up to Europeans. What, what Europeans at that time were they adjusting for? They, they were adjusting for a Stojakovic? He do Turkoglu? The, uh, the only star, the Tony Kukoc? The only star, the only European, if I think about it, the only European star that really emerged that you would argue that we were, were changing the game for him. And a player that was even projected to have star potential was Dirk. That was the only one. Why do you think that more threes, pass and cut? This is not our league. This is not the American style. This is the Euro style. So Drive in, suck the defense in, pass the ball to the three-point line. It's the three-point shooting league because they're copying Euro style. San Antonio, I mean, uh, Suns, right? Uh -huh. What was the biggest thing the Suns didn't do? Defense. Defense. Ole, let's go. Boom, let's go. Yeah, let's, yep. Seven yep. seconds. Yep. Seven seconds. Right? Seven now, seconds. Seven, now, seven, now, seven, now, seven, 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 we don't want to yeah, yeah. foul so we can go try to score. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How many Europeans, unless he's saying, that, to be fair, Dan Tony picked up a lot of his coaching identity from overseas, to be fair. And I don't want to make it seem like that's that. there's some validity behind that. My, my brother, like, most of these these players are American born players. American, 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 American. Whole bunch of Americans. Majority of the players that were on the team receiving, especially receiving any type of playing time. Um, Omar Sotomayor, Kurt Thomas, Tim Thomas, um, Sean Marion, James Jones, Jim Jackson, Eddie House. The Americans. Also, the sidebar, uh, D'Antoni is not the first coach in NBA history to build an identity off of up-tempo play and be more offensive leaning. He's not the first one. Don Nelson was doing that for decades before D'Antoni came over. And Don Nelson was an American who also played American basketball. That was the whole We're going thing of Dan you. Tony. Yep. Right? That is what the league was created off of, to have more of those guys in so they can expand the business. Mm. Make it a global, global game. So, global game. Be very mindful again. The rules that they changed to open the game up and make it less aggressive started in the late 80s or early 90s. Game. You remember pushing global game, global game. How they gonna have a global game if it's too physical and too athletic for them? So they have to figure out ways where they can exist inside of the game. Wow. Right? Hakeem existed, Dirk came in the NBA, Detlef Schrimpf, Drajan Pekovic. Um, there, there were several foreign players. If, you, if we're being honest with ourselves, for a game, for a sport in general, in a league that was still relatively young in terms of reaching a wider uh, audience, because be mindful, up until like the 80s, the NBA wasn't even reaching most of the people in America. So from the 80s into the 90s, the amount of ground that was made up within a short amount of time to already start introducing a lot of foreign born players was actually pretty impressive. Like just this this I want to just stop and think about that. Drajan Petrovic, um, Tony Cook coach, Dentless Shrimp, Hakeem Olajuwon, uh, Dikembe Mutombo. All of these players were foreign born players. Glo uh, so, uh, Avina Sabonis. Shout out to David Stern. But the amount of like ground that he made up within a very short amount of time is more than respectable. But this idea that they did that 
win, bro. They 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 were already making it global way before the significant rule changes that had occurred because there were already players who were dominating in very facets of basketball that were not American born. Other than that, but like that's what I'm saying. So when you talk about the global part of it, they're only they just like the American Caucasian got put out of the game. Mm. So to read to, to to bring it back, you had to figure out how to and we're just taking advantage of it. Mm. Damn, bro, that makes so much sense. You that said get rid sense. of all the Euros and then the de the defense will show up. The defense show up? I ain't, shit, I ain't got I ain't got 55 percent from the three, 62 percent from the three, 45 percent from the three, and the only black nigga on there, 31. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is that is by far the most ignorant shit that they have said in this fucking video. Even if you want to say it's being hyperbolic and funny, that is the most ignorant, dumb, lunacy bullshit that they said in this entire video. What in the f what are they, what are you talking about, my nigga? First of all, Gil Gilbert, you, you sound like the same coaches that put a cap on who you were as a ball player because for whatever reason, playing style has to be identified with race. You sound like a coon. The black guy shoot 31%. So let's see if that's factually correct. Out of all the players in the NBA who are shooting 38% from three on at least five attempts from behind the arc. Grayson Allen, American, 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 American. Out of all the volume shooting players in the NBA who are good three point shooters, only three of them are European. Most of these players are black. What are you talking about? Oh! If we get rid of the Europeans, defense will come back. When Luka matched up against the Hawks and dropped 73 points, who was on the Hawks again? Oh, Sadiq Bey. Where's he? Oh, he's from North Carolina, so that's America. Jalen Johnson. Oh, he's from Wisconsin. That's America. Okay. Uh, DeJounte Murray, Washington. That's America. Trey Young, Texas. He's American. Okay, okay. Clint Capella, Switzerland. Soft. Was he given? Clint Capella the business, or was he scoring on all these other niggas? No. Clint Capella is not the reason why their defense is egregiously bad. He's easily one of the better defenders, and he's the actual foreigner in the starting five. Essentially, there's two foreign-born players on the team that Luka dropped 70 on, and you think that the reason why he dropped 70 is because of those two, one of which is actually the better defensive player on the roster in Clint Capella? Oh! Get rid of the Europeans, and we'll be able to play. No, nigga. No, you niggas try so hard to take away credit from what these players actually do that it's actually sickening. And low key, it's xenophobic. My nigga, you taking, removing foreign players does not then mean all of a sudden across the board, defensively, things are gonna get better. Some of the worst defenders in the NBA are American born players. Damian Lillard don't play no damn defense. Trey Young don't play no damn defense. What are we talking about? Towns, Carl Anthony Towns, he don't play no damn defense. The best, the best defender on the Minnesota Timberwolves is a foreign born player. Yo, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below this is by far one of the worst takes i've seen from this platform in a quite a quite a while but yeah let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and until next time i'll see you all later peace